Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOC course on Economics of Health and Education. In lesson 2 of this week, we will uh, study about demand for health insurance. In modern times, in matters of health, the instrument of health insurance has become a very important way of securing oneself against future health risks. People demand health insurance because they want to secure themselves against emergency losses in future. So, demand for health insurance is a rational choice which people make uh, depending upon their capability to take risks in the future. In this class, we will learn about a basic private health insurance uh, contract. In doing so, we will uh, explore the economic understanding of how a risk averse individual behaves when faced, uh, confronted with uh, future risks with regard to health. Now, remember that in the earlier classes, we have already understood health as a durable stock of capital good, which means that the individual is faced with the reality of facing depreciation as one ages. So, in this context, uh, the individual decision with regard to whether to buy a health insurance or not is based upon the idea of uncertainty that, a, that an individual faces concerning his or her health. I have planned today's lecture as uh, follows. Based on the uh, universal idea of a declining marginal utility of income, we will first be introduced to an income utility uh, diagram of economics. How the income utility curve behaves tells us about the risk averseness of an individual. So, we will study about how an income utility diagram looks for a risk averse individual. Assuming that the risk averse individual is a rational individual who is making a choice about uh, securing himself or herself against future risks of illnesses. Now, while taking decisions about whether or not to buy a health insurance, an individual is of course always faced with uncertainty. So, how does uncertainty provoke a rational individual to weigh the odds between his expected future income or expected utility from income then becomes an important decision. So, we will understand this difference in this class. Further, based upon the ideas of risk averseness and the distinction between utility from expected income versus expected utility from income, we will understand what are the features of a basic health insurance contract. Finally, to be able to lay a base for our discussion on Indian health policy and universal health care, we will sketch out the basic differences between private health insurance and social health insurance. Now, let us begin with uh, why do people uh, demand insurance in general and uh, health insurance in particular? Insurance is basically a hedge against risk, which is against the possibility of bad outcomes. So, purchasing insurance means foregoing incomes in good times under the uh, assumption that the individual is going to face bad times in future. So, the individual who buys health insurance but never visits the hospital loses out on that income, which basically means that from the point of view of an economic decision making act, the health seeking behavior of an individual is of utmost importance when making a decision about buying health insurance. So, one might buy health insurance or not buy health insurance depending upon his or her social behavior of being able to uh, seek health care in times of need. Now, what drives the demand for insurance? Is it always the fear of unknown or what causes people to be afraid of the unknown? Uh, we will understand these questions in the context of rational decision making abilities of individual who are demanding insurance. But ultimately from the point of view of an economic decision making act, demand for health insurance is connected to the idea of what is the marginal utility of income for different individuals. Is it declining marginal utility of income? Usually as income increases, marginal utility of uh, uh, derived out of income increases, but beyond a threshold marginal utility of income starts declining or declining marginal utility of income uh, sets in. And this threshold beyond which the marginal utility of income declines is different for different sets of individuals. Usually for richer individuals, the declining marginal utility of income threshold sets in earlier than that of poorer individuals. Poorer individuals usually have a larger propensity to consume or larger propensity to earn more income as deriving more and more income gives them more and more utility and therefore their utility derived out of higher incomes is much higher. 
So therefore, when we are discussing about the decision of individual whether to buy an insurance or not, we must understand the status of the individual, the standard of living of the individual and what is the threshold at which marginal utility of income starts declining for that particular individual. Now, let us uh, understand the utility function of income. In the earlier classes, we have been introduced to the utility function of health or a health utility function. In this lesson, we will get introduced to the basic idea of a utility function of income. Here, we will assume that in a model, an individual cares about only his or her earned income and nothing else. So, income is the most important input in this utility function. So, we will define a utility function and in this case the utility function will have a single input which is I or income. Now, what properties should the individual's utility function or U of I have? As I have just said that this is guided by the universal rule of declining marginal utility of income. So, first utility should increase with income or the first derivative of the utility function is positive and the second property of this individual's preferences is that his or her marginal utility of income is declining in income. This is equivalent to the second derivative of the utility function being negative. This is not very hard to understand if we have come across real life examples. For example, the first rupee that an individual has is very valuable to her because an income of 1 rupee is always better than no income at all. So, i is equal to 1 is much better than an income of 0 or i is equal to 0. But if the individual is already a millionaire, gaining an extra rupee may mean very little to him or her and empirically such preferences seem to be very common. So, therefore, individuals who are richer uh, have their marginal utility of income uh, is, is declining and for poorer individuals the utility derived out of an additional unit of income earned is very high compared to a richer individual. And this is a common uh, intuition that we can go by to be able to understand the risk averse behavior of an individual. Now let us get introduced to an income utility diagram. In the figure here you see income uh, shown on the x-axis and utility derived out of income on the y-axis and we have already been introduced to the idea that uh, usually in economics a rational human being, a rational individual makes decisions in the market in such a manner that her utility derived out of the, the commodity that she is purchasing or the income that she is earning is uh, is, is increasing. Uh, there is a desire for deriving more and more utility out of the good that he or she is consuming. So, utility is increasing with income but at a declining rate as is uh, going by the assumption of declining marginal utility of income. And this relationship between declining marginal utility of income and risk aversion is a key insight of modern economics. So, uh, the income utility curve is uh, concave in nature. And this utility function and concavity assumption can be explained by saying that for a risk averse individual, the utility function is concave reflecting diminishing marginal utility. And the concavity of the utility function means that the individual gets less additional utility from each extra unit of income and therefore the individual is willing to take less risks that could lead to either higher or lower income. So, this is uh, the utility function of a risk averse individual and in this context when we are discussing we understand that a risk averse individual is usually a rational individual who is making a rational choice about what is the premium that he or she has to pay on the future expenses that she has to uh, she or he has to make on the illnesses that they are facing in future. Now, let us also understand that the risk averse individual is making a decision about purchasing an insurance under conditions of uncertainty. So, under conditions of uncertainty then how does the individual's utility derived out of income add up? Suppose that the individual faces the possibility of becoming sick. They do not know whether they will become sick but they know that the probability of sickness is p uh, with uh, p value 0 or 1 or anything between them. So, consequently the probability of staying healthy is 1 minus p. They also know that if they do get sick, medical bills and missed work will reduce their income considerably. So, we have two levels of incomes here IS and IH. Let IS be their income if they get sick and let IH be their income if they are healthy. 
and intuitively IH or income when they are healthy is greater than IS uh, because if uh, they are healthy then they are not uh, losing out on the wages that they have to forego on account of being sick. So, under conditions of uncertainty, one way of summarizing all possible outcomes in a concise way is of course to look at the expected value. Now, the expected value of a random variable by definition is the sum of all possible outcomes of uh, x weighted by each outcome's probability. So, if the outcomes are x1, x2 and so on and the probabilities for each outcome are p1, p2 and so on, then the expected value of x is the probability value multiplied the by the expected outcome and the sum of all of them. Now, in our case, the expected value of uh, the income will be found by looking at the probability of falling sick multiplied by the income that the individual is earning when she has fallen sick plus the probability of being healthy which is 1 minus p uh, and the income that the individual is earning when he or she is healthy which is ih. So, expected value of income will be p uh, into is plus 1 minus p into ih. Now, one, one feature of this equation 4 is that the expected income depends critically on the probability value of falling sick, the probability of illness because as a person gets sick, it becomes more likely that the probability value attached to being sick rises and therefore, the weight given to income is increases and rising p would then translate to a reduced expected income. So, the probability attached to being sick becomes an important factor that leads to expected income value. Now, let us try to understand risk aversion in the context of calculating the expected income or the utility derived out of the expected income. Now, suppose we conduct an experiment where we offer a starving graduate student a choice between two possible options, a lottery A and a certain payout. B. Now, this uh, lottery A uh, and B are a situation that the uh, starving graduate student is faced with under conditions of sickness which is where we are referring to the starving graduate student. Now, what does the option uh, lottery A uh, contain? It contains an award of rupees 500 but with half a probability of winning the lottery of rupees 500 and half a probability of not winning the a lottery of rupees 500. The option B on the other hand has a certain payout of a cash award of rupees 250 with probability 1. Now, which are the options that the starving graduate student would choose given conditions of uncertainty? Now, note here that given the uh, expected value of income which is p into is plus 1 minus p into ih, the expected value of both the lottery and the certain payout is rupees 250. So, both in this case as well as in this case, the expected income that the starving graduate student may have is uh, rupees 250. But despite the fact that both choices provide the same expected income, experimental studies have reliably found that most people often prefer certain payouts to uncertain payouts. So, if the starving graduate student says he prefers option B, what does that imply about his utility function? It implies that the individual is facing a concave income utility function and therefore, the individual is a risk averse individual. So, in this context, we need to define expected utility of an uncertain income. We cannot just be concerned about the utility derived out of the expected income, but we need to be able to estimate the expected utility out of an uncertain income. Now, let us look at the expected utility of income. Like expected income, expected utility is also an average over all states weighted by the probability of each state. The expected uh, utility from a random payout x and the expected utility of x is the sum of utility from each of the possible outcomes weighted by each outcome's probability. So, if the outcomes x are x1, x2 and so on and the probabilities for each outcome are p1, p2 and so on, then the expected utility of x is the probability value p1 multiplied by the utility derived out of the outcome x1 plus probability value p2 multiplied by the utility derived out of the outcome x2 and so on. 
So, the starving student's preference for option B over option A basically implies that his expected utility from B is greater than his expected utility from A. And this is one of the important points which is important for us to define who is a risk averse individual and how that individual is going to make a decision under uncertainty conditions about purchasing a health insurance. So, it translates to the equation where expected utility derived out of the option B is greater than expected utility derived out of the option A. So, in this case, the starving student prefers the more certain payout over the less certain one, even though the expected value of those two options is equal. So, then we say that the student is acting in a risk averse manner over the choices available. So, now with this, by understanding the distinction between utility derived out of expected income versus expected utility of income, we are in a position to define uh, eventually who is a risk averse individual from the point of view of economics of health insurance. So, the situation that the individual who might get sick is similar to the lottery in option A in that her income i is a random variable basically says that they gain a high income i h if they stay healthy and low income i s if they are sick. She is uncertain about which outcome will happen although they know that probability of becoming sick is p. So, the expected utility from income is probability of falling sick multiplied by the utility derived out of income when they have fallen sick plus the probability of being healthy which is 1 minus p multiplied by the utility derived out of income uh, when they are healthy which is i h. So, expected utility of income is p multiplied by u i s plus 1 minus p into u i h. So, then expected utility from income changes as the probability of sickness changes. This is another way of defining a risk averse individual or what is risk aversion in the utility income model. So, these are these statements are equivalent to saying that an individual is risk averse while making a rational uh, choice with regard to purchasing a health insurance contract. So, what are the important points here? First is that the individual always prefers a certain outcome to an uncertain outcome with the same expected income. Second point is that the individual prefers the utility she would get from her expected income to the expected utility she will get from her actual income because presently we will see that the expected utility that the individual gets from her actual income will always be less than the utility she is expecting from her income. So, utility of expected income is greater than expected utility of income that is another way of defining a risk averse individual and when these conditions are met we say that the individual is risk risk averse. So, what we have presently done is to be able to explain with the help of the income utility curve in economics uh, about uh, uh, explaining who is a risk averse individual and how does a risk averse individual behave under conditions of uncertainty. And we have seen that under conditions of uncertainty, the individual weighs the odds between the utility derived out of her expected income versus the uh, expected utility of income and that is what helps the individual to make a decision about buying the uh, health insurance contract. Now, let us look at a few hypothetical graphs that I have put together. On the x axis here we have uh, incomes, on the y axis we have expected utility derived out of incomes. The curves here which are concave income utility uh, curves range from lightest green to the darkest green and the middle curve here is of uh, black in color. So, this is a hypothetical graph which illustrates the expected utility from income for different probabilities of sickness. So, the first uh, utility curve uh, let us call it uh, I1 is uh, the income utility curve which has probability of the individual uh, falling sick as 0. The second utility curve let us call it I2 has uh, the probability of the probability of falling sick increases from 0 to 0 0.25. The third I3 uh, is uh, the income utility curve of the individual when the probability of falling sick increases to 0 0.5 and so on I4 and I5. 
So, we have 5 uh, different uh, income utility curves which varying degrees of uh, sickness uh, probabilities of the individual. The graph basically shows how the expected utility changes with varying levels of income and as can be seen from the graph that as the probability of falling sick increases, the income utility curve shifts uh, downwards which means that the income uh, reduces. So, as the probability of sickness increases, the expected utility for a given level of income decreases, reflecting the greater risk and reduced effective income due to potential medical costs. Now, this utility is of course calculated using a logarithmic function typical in economic models to represent risk aversion as we have already discussed in the beginning of this class that is increases in income yield diminishing marginal returns in uh, utility and each curve here corresponds to a different probability of sickness demonstrating the impact of health risk on financial well-being. So, uh, this uh, curve I1 here can be referred to as the full income curve which means that the probability of falling sick is 0 and the rest of the income utility curves are adjusted income as the probability of falling sick increases for the individual here. So, in the previous graph uh, I have uh, also included chords between two specific points for each probability of sickness at an example income level. So, these chords illustrate how the expected utility changes from the utility at full income to the adjusted utility considering the probability of sickness. So, these are the connecting points here which I have put together to explain the fact that as the probability of sickness increases for the individual the uh, individual moves from a full income level depicted by the uh, income utility curve I1 to the income utility curve I5. So, these points are connected by the red dashed line. So, if one has to say what is the definition of a full income utility, this is the utility at the example income without any sickness and what is adjusted income utility, this is the utility considering the reduced effective income due to sickness adjusted by the respective probability. So, this visualization here emphasizes how different levels of probability of sickness or health risk impact an individual's financial utility illustrating the move from higher to lower utility as risk increases. In different textbooks there are different uh, forms of uh, showing these kinds of uh, movement from full income levels to adjusted income levels. One can uh, draw different income utility curves to show the reduced uh, expected income that one is faced with given the probability of sickness or we can also understand uh, the income uh, changes or adjusted income uh, when we are moving along the uh, income utility curve. Like for example, in this curve here this uh, figure here shows movement along the utility curve. It is uh, the same kind of figure that we have drawn here. Here on the x axis there is income and the y axis shows utility derived out of an income, out of the income faced by the individual and this one shows movement along the utility curve with different probabilities of sickness. So, if we begin from this point here, the uh, utility derived out of uh, uh, income is uh, the highest here which is 25,000 we have shown as uh, 25,000 and then as the probability of falling sick increases the expected utility of income keeps uh, declining. So, in this graph I have depicted a single utility curve for full income with different probabilities of sickness represented by movements along the curve and each point on the curve represents how the utility changes at a specific income level that has been adjusted based on the probability of sickness. So, utility curve for full income represents the baseline utility without any reduction due to sickness and the different points on the curve each marked point shows the adjusted utility for different probabilities of sickness. As the probability of sickness increases the income is effectively reduced. We have assumed a 25 percent reduction for full sickness leading to a lower utility. So, this visualization clearly shows the impact of varying probabilities of sickness on the individual's utility where each point moves leftward toward lower income and downward as the risk or the probability of sickness increases. These two visualizations have been done to make uh, the explanation easier for the learners where we want to understand how the uh, individual moves 
uh, when the probability of sickness increases and how that impacts the income utility curve. This also tells us about the behavior of a risk averse individual as the probability of sickness increases. Now, let us uh, understand further the distinction between uh, utility derived out of expected income versus expected utility from income. Now, in this graph, there are uh, two points here which refers to the expected utility uh, from income. Uh, now, what is the difference? To reiterate the point, utility from expected income, this value is calculated by first averaging the incomes under different scenarios to get a single expected income figure and then computing the utility from this averaged income. This point is marked in uh, blue. This is equivalent to the option B, the certain income that the starving graduate student would have chosen given the options A and B. So, it is the utility derived out of the expected income which is uh, averaging the incomes under different scenarios to get a single expected income figure and then computing the utility for this averaged income. Whereas, expected utility from income, this calculation involves computing the utility for each possible income outcome with and without sickness, each weighted by the probability of that outcome occurring. And this is shown by the red dashed line connecting the utility at reduced income due to sickness and the resulting expected utility at the full income point. This demonstrates that expected utility accounts for the spread and risk of different outcomes and often the individual would of course always favor the blue point than the red point which shows the risk averseness of an individual and therefore that determines what will be the expected payout that the individual would be expecting from an insurance company when he or she is making a decision to purchase health insurance. So, let us uh, summarize the key observations from the discussion that we have had so far. Utility from expected income generally lies above the expected utility from income when plotted on a concave utility function like a log function and this illustrates the principle of Jensen's inequality where the utility of the expectation is greater than the expectation of the utilities due to the concavity of the utility function. So, the concavity of the income utility function basically gives us the risk averseness nature of an individual and which is central to most of the decision making processes, the economic decision making process with regard to buying a health insurance. So, if one has to ask what does the concave income utility function imply with regard to uh, a rational individual who is trying to make a choice regarding buying a health insurance in plain and simple terms it basically means that it is a risk averse individual who will always prefer a more certain outcome than an uncertain outcome. This difference is critical in economics and insurance emphasizing why risk averse individuals prefer insurance. It effectively flatters their income distribution providing a more certain outcome that is valued higher in terms of utility. Now, in this context, let us try to understand that we have now understood the risk averseness behavior of an individual. Let us now try to understand how does an individual demand uh, health insurance and what are the features of a basic health insurance contract. Now, the first point, what are the reasons for an individual demanding health insurance? The first point is that of risk aversion. The demand for health insurance is primarily driven by individuals risk aversion. People prefer to avoid uncertain potentially high medical costs opting for the predictable expense of insurance premiums instead. Second point is that the individual is always um, uh, trying to maximize their expected utility. So, individuals weigh the expected utility of purchasing insurance against the utility of not purchasing it factoring in probabilities of health issues and potential costs. There are of course very many issues of whether the individual who is demanding health insurance is a sick person or a healthy person, what is the age of the individual who is uh, demanding insurance. These are all very important factors that goes on to determine uh, whether or not the individual will buy health insurance and what will be the premium that the individual has to pay for the health insurance. We will take up these issues in the next class, but in this lesson, we are getting ourselves familiarized with the basic issues surrounding why an individual prefers uh, health insurance in the first place. 
The third point is that of income and wealth levels. The demand for insurance increases with income as wealthier individuals are more likely to afford and value the protection insurance provides. The fourth point is that of health status and age. Generally, people with poorer health or older age have a higher demand for health insurance due to a greater anticipated need for medical services. But it may not be so. In the context of developing countries, we have many examples where uh, people who are more vulnerable to sickness conditions or ill health conditions may not have the affordability to be able to purchase a health insurance instrument. Uh, now, it is in this context that we can actually define a basic health insurance contract which is also referred to as an actuarially fair insurance. Uh, there are uh, some important points with regard to what is a basic health insurance contract. The first point is that the premiums equal expected payouts uh, given the circumstances under which uh, a, a rational individual is weighing the odds between the utility derived out of the expected income versus the expected utility of income, the premium that the individual will pay will always equal the expected payouts from the insurance company, uh, which is equivalent to the expected utility of income. So, an actuarially fair insurance is defined as a policy where the premium paid by the insured is equal to the expected value of the benefits they will receive. So, this means that the insurance company expects to break even rather than make a profit from the premiums. The second point is that of no administrative costs. An actuarially fair insurance or a basic health insurance contract has the property of having no administrative costs. The concept assumes that there are no administrative costs involved. In reality, however, insurance includes such costs making purely actuarially fair insurance rare. However, understanding a basic health insurance contract is important to understand the decision making capabilities of a risk averse individual in an academic sense of the term. The third point is that of risk pooling. The principle relies on pooling risks among a large group of people which helps in averaging out the healthcare costs across all insured individuals. So, from the point of view of a health insurance company, uh, it is not just sick individuals who are buying health insurance or just healthy individuals buying health insurance. The health insurance, uh, buying of health insurance is based on the concept of risk pooling which means that there are more or less uh, equal number of healthy individuals and sick individuals buying health insurance and so people who have the probability of falling um, uh, more sick uh, can uh, receive an expected payout based upon the premiums paid by the healthy individuals and so on. However, it has to be a balancing act otherwise it will lead to uh, further problems within the health insurance market which we will take up in the next class. Now, a basic health insurance is uh, an actuarially fair health insurance as I just mentioned and an actuarially fair health insurance contract is a theoretical concept used in insurance and economics to describe a policy where the premium exactly equals the expected payouts. And this type of contract means that over time the insurer expects to break even neither making a profit nor a loss from the premiums collected. So, what are the components of actuarially fair health insurance? Um, number one is that premiums equal expected claims. The premium paid by the insured is exactly equal to the expected value of the claims that the insurer anticipates they will have to pay out for that insured. Uh, this expected value is calculated based on statistical analysis of risk factors and historical claims data. Second point is that there are no load for expenses. In a purely actuarially fair scenario, the premium does not include any loading for administrative expenses, profit margins or other costs and of course this is an idealized concept but in practice premiums must cover additional expenses and therefore there are huge administrative costs which become an important component of the actual premium paid by the individuals. Risk assessment is the next important point. The calculation of premium is based on a precise assessment of risk specific to the individual or group being insured and factors such as age, medical history, lifestyle and geographic location become important factors to estimate the likelihood and cause of future claims. Now, what are the implications and practical relevance of understanding an actuarially uh, fair health insurance? 
Uh, first is uh, risk pooling and subsidization. In reality, most health insurance contracts, as I mentioned just earlier, are not actually fair because they involve risk pooling. This means that healthier individuals often pay more than their expected claims to cross-subsidize sicker individuals who pay less than their expected claims. And this cross-subsidization is essential for providing affordable coverage to all, including those with high health risks. Uh, but this often leads to the problem of what is uh, referred to as moral hazard in uh, health insurance. The second uh, important point uh, implication is that of insurance market dynamics. If health insurance contracts were strictly actuarially fair, individuals with high health risks might find premiums very expensive, potentially leading them to forego insurance altogether. And this situation could intensify issues like adverse selection, where only high risk individuals uh, seek insurance, driving up costs and completely destabilizing the insurance market. And these are uh, these uh, problems of moral hazard and adverse selection are real problems that are faced in health insurance markets because of which there are countries or markets where health insurance thrives and there are places where health insurance, private health insurance does not thrive. So, while the concept of an actually fair health insurance contract provides a useful framework for understanding the relationship between premiums and risk, actual health insurance practices often deviate from this model to meet broader social goals such as accessibility, affordability and risk sharing, also depending upon what are the uh, conditions of the insurance market in the country concerned. And these deviations are necessary to ensure the health insurance remains inclusive and financially sustainable in diverse population. So, what we have done so far is uh, to be able to explore the economic understanding of an income utility curve. And with the simple uh, income utility curve, we have been able to define who is a risk averse individual. We have discussed why the understanding of risk averse individual is important in the context of uh, health insurance. Uh, we and the demand for health insurance needs to be seen in continuum of the demand for health lessons that we have done, where we have said that there is a demand for well-being, people's demand for a good health status is determined by various factors. In a similar line, there is a demand for health insurance because people uh, often uh, want to be in good health. and. In terms of uh, the economic understanding of people demanding good health or demanding health insurance, uh, income becomes an important uh, criteria. People often want to secure uh, themselves against uh, emergency losses of income uh, due to ill health. And therefore, the risk averseness nature of an individual is an important guiding factor that uh, helps them to uh, make a decision about purchasing health insurance. Now, because we are uh, guided by conditions of uncertainty or we are uh, not guided by conditions of uncertainty, therefore, the decision to buy an health insurance is based upon the individual weighing the odds between utility derived out of expected income versus expected utility of income. With the help of hypothetical uh, income utility curves, we saw that as the probability of sickness increases, the expected utility of income keeps on declining and often the individual is making a choice between certain payouts versus uncertain payouts and uh, the uh, expected utility of income is often lesser than the utility derived out of expected income. And it is under these conditions that the individual makes a decision regarding buying a health insurance contract and the premium amount that the individual wants to pay for the health insurance contract is often based upon the expected, the expected utility of payouts that the individual calculates or uh, imagines to be based upon the health insurance contract. Now, because we are talking about uh, uh, health insurance, uh, private health insurance, uh, in the context of uh, an a rational individual, we must also contextualize demand for insurance uh, based upon country contexts. As the course progresses, when we go into Indian national health policy and uh, universal health coverage, uh, issues surrounding universal health care and universal health coverage, we will take up the issue of uh, say for example, Ayushman Bharat program or the uh, social health insurance program that we currently have in India. So, to be able to make a smooth transition from an economic understanding of a 
of a of a private health insurance to social health insurance i would also like to introduce you to some basic differences between what is a private health insurance versus what is a social health insurance so uh, these difference can be understood based upon five important points the first important point is with respect to funding in the case of private health insurance uh, they are funded through premiums paid by individuals or risk averse individuals or their employers and these premiums can vary based on factors such as health uh, status age and the level of coverage chosen whether you are looking for partial coverage whether you are looking for disease specific coverages whether you are looking for full coverage whether you are looking for uh, uh, co payments uh, uh, kind of coverage where there will be part payments by the patients by the individual concerned and part payments by the company uh, the insurance company and so on whereas in the case of social health insurance uh, it is funded through taxes or mandatory contributions from employers and employees based on income levels rather than health risk and this ensures that everyone contributes a fair share according to their financial ability the second important point is with regard to administration in the case of private health insurance private insurance companies uh, pro provide administration and the administration is often competitive with multiple insurers offering a variety of plans uh, and uh, the administrative costs of the private insurance companies are a very important component of the uh, amount of premium paid by the individuals to the private companies contrast this with the administration uh, for social health insurance programs they are typically administered by the government or a mandated public or quasi public agency and this system is designed to be universal covering all or most of the population in india for example the ayushman bharat program does not cover the entire population it is targeted for uh, poorer individuals and people living in the slum areas in the urban areas and the um, uh, poorer people in the rural areas and so on however there are country case studies where where uh, uh, if time permits we can look at where social health insurance program has been uh, uh, taken up to cover the entire population in terms of coverage uh, private health insurance is generally optional and can be tailored to the individual's needs and financial capacity plans can vary greatly in terms of scope of coverage uh, the co-payments choice of healthcare providers etc in the case of shi or social health insurance coverage is generally comprehensive and universal and it is aimed at providing a basic level of healthcare to all insured persons it is not typically profit driven and the emphasis is mostly on social solidarity the fourth point is with respect to eligibility and premiums uh, eligibility and premiums can be based on risk factors such as age lifestyle pre existing conditions and personal health history this can result in significant variations in premiums and coverage exclusions in the case of shi eligibility is typically universal covering all residents or all employed persons and their dependents or all unemployed persons poorer persons in the in the context of say uh, government administered social health insurance programs like what we have in india currently premiums are generally not based on individual health risks which helps to prevent discrimination based on health status or moral or issues of moral hazard and adverse selection are minimized in the case of social health insurance programs the phi or private health insurance goal is primarily to make a profit as far as the health insurance company is concerned although they also aim to provide value to customers to remain uh, competitive and the focus is on individual responsibility and choice in the case of social health insurance the primary goal is to provide equitable access to healthcare services for all members of society ensuring that access to healthcare does not depend only on one's financial uh, status so these are the key differences between uh, the private health insurance and social health insurance uh, risk assessment and premium setting is an important uh, difference private insurance often uses risk based assessments to set premiums while social insurance uses income based contributions without regard to individual health risks and therefore private health insurance uh, is uh, competitive the insurance providers engage in cutthroat competition to be able to cater to different sections of the population uh, age wise disease profile wise and so on and there are uh, strict regulations and strict administration of the diseases that the individuals are faced with when providing insurance uh, private health insurance to an individual 
Second point is with regard to equity versus efficiency. So, social health insurance emphasizes equity and broad coverage potentially at the cost of efficiency and choice. Uh, when we take up Ayushman Bharat program in India, we will look up various studies which have raised questions about um, efficiency with regard to implementation of the program. But of course, uh, equity is an important concern when it comes to social health insurance program. Private health insurance may offer more choices and efficiency but can also lead to inequalities in access and coverage primarily because of the income factor. Affordability may become an important issue with regard to private health insurance. So, people who are sicker or who have the probability of falling more sick but have low incomes may not be able to afford the private health insurance that is provided in the health care in the health insurance market. Finally, uh, profit motive. Private insurers operate with a profit motive while social health insurance schemes prioritize social welfare and also are typically not profit oriented. Now, both systems have roles in various health systems worldwide and some countries employ a mix of both to maximize coverage and optimize health care outcomes. Now, we have reached the end of this lesson. What we have tried to do in today's lesson is to familiarize ourselves with the idea of why people demand health insurance. Of course, we have to understand that in today's times when the possibility of falling sickness or the probability of falling sick has increased manifold, people often make a choice with regard to uh, securing themselves against the future odds of falling sick. Uh, however, there are uh, very many constraints as far as individuals are concerned and these constraints differ from uh, by by different sections of the population these constraints also differ by different uh, countries that the people belong to and therefore uh, the uh, choice of buying health insurance is also guided by various policy frameworks as far as different countries are concerned but keeping all of these issues aside if we have to understand the uh, uh, the economic understanding of why people demand insurance is guided by the fact that uh, a rational individual is a risk averse individual and there are often trade offs between the different kinds of choices that a person has to make there are there is limited income and with the limited income the uh, individual has to make a choice between uh, their uh, current consumption and the future consumption and ensuring oneself against the risk of future uh, illnesses is planning for future consumption. So, when there are income constraints but current consumption expenditures have to be carried out, then it becomes a serious uh, decision making matter as far as the individual is concerned whether the individual's uh, income or future income will be seriously affected because of ill health or the probability of falling sick is uh, an important uh, uh, factor that will drive one's decision regarding buying health insurance. Now, that said, we must also understand understand that developing countries such as India uh, still has very low uh, private health insurance coverage. Uh, private health insurance in Indian country context has only emerged in the recent times and therefore, we must understand some of these policy issues surrounding whether or not people buy insurance and why they do not buy insurance or why they do buy insurance in certain uh, uh, contexts more carefully. Let us end today's class with this. In the next lesson, we will take up issues of moral hazard and adverse selection in the context of health insurance market and uh, further issues related to ideas of health insurance in the developing country context. Thank you. Mm -hmm.